Lately, there's been a thought that's been developing in the back of my mind that's been bothering me somewhat. We live in a world that is run by code. All these services and apps and devices that I use on a daily basis are full of instructions that were written by someone in a code on a computer and run to make my life better. And it seems crazy to me that I'm so reliant on something but haven't the faintest idea of how it works at all. I've always wanted to learn, I've always wanted to write something myself, but I really struggled with the terminal layout and the, the very blank vanilla text that has no graphical interface. I think for me to start learning something like this, I really, really need some sort of visual graphics to play with here. And that's when YouTube's algorithm, which was coded by people, recommended me a channel called The Coding Train. This guy, Daniel Schiffman, is a fantastic programmer and an excellent teacher and he does these videos where he does a coding challenge so he'll code Flappy Bird right there in front of you live in like less than half an hour. So inspired by this channel which you should definitely check out by the way I want to code something for myself I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn to program a fun simple game that runs in a browser so that anyone can play this. As always this is day one hour zero. Let's get started. All right, step one. I need to learn the basics of programming and writing in the language I want to write this game in. Technical details. I'm gonna write this using a tool called P5, which is a JavaScript library. It's free, it runs in everyone's browser, so you don't need to install anything. It's designed to be accessible for beginners. That's perfect for me. All right, let's draw a circle. I'm just using the tutorial on the P5 website. I began learning by simply following basic tutorials online, drawing circles and rectangles. Look at that. That is a gorgeous circle, perfectly round. I found the way P5 is written to be really intuitive. And for the first time with programming, it felt like I was getting somewhere. Ellipse means draw an ellipse. Rectangle means draw a rectangle. It's more like English and I can see exactly what's happening right here. This is, going, this is going to be a piece of cake. I'd make mistakes, but they often led to pleasing and interesting results. I've made art. Next, I tried copying other people's code and messing around with it to see the effects and to try and gain an understanding of how it worked. I found this to be one of the most effective learning methods. I typed it line by line along with uh, the coding train. By doing this, it means I have a code that runs, so, um, you know, I can play around with it. That's really Once nice. Once I gathered enough knowledge, I thought I'd challenge myself by attempting to write my first little program. So I've got an idea for the first original project that I want to create. You know the DVD, like, bouncing screen where it bounces all over the screen and everyone wants it to bounce off the corner? I think it'd be cool to code something like that. So just a little rectangle that bounces around the screen, hopefully one day hits the corner. I don't know. This is cool because I've programmed it so that it knows when it's at the corner and it bounces off it. So what I want to do now is set this to have a random direction and location so it's really like the real DVD screen. Do nothing. And this is the exact same as leaving a blank else statement in there. How it changes color each time it hits off the wall is equal to v cos theta. If Miss Milne, my maths teacher, is somehow watching this, you'd be pleased to know that 15 years later, I still got my trig down. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, that's just a little bit fast. <laughs> it took me more than four hours to write this code, which is only 49 lines, but if I run it, that is a good approximation of the DVD. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> I think I've got a good enough grasp on the tools I need to make what I want. So tomorrow I'll get started on the game. All right, so here's my idea. 
rather than just ripping off someone else's design, I thought I'd do something that's relevant to me. So do you guys remember a while back, I made a video where I learned to break a wine glass using just my voice. Anyway, I thought I'd make a game that is based on that concept. So, what I want to do is have a randomly, I want to have a randomly generated wine glass. So, it chooses from a, a range of different wine glasses, different styles, and scales it randomly. And this wine glass will have a pitch that breaks it. And then I'm here, my face is here. I don't know how to draw a face. God, that's terrible. Why does that look so damn creepy? Maybe some teeth? Anyway, I'm here and I'm shouting into the wine glass. And the user has to guess the pitch that the wine glass will break based on the size. And they can move the mouse up or down or left and right, I don't know which way yet. And that will adjust the pitch, so up, so it will get higher or lower. And when you're on the right pitch, this wine glass will shake and eventually it will break. And all the while the game keeps the scoreboard of how many wine glasses you've broken. So to summarize, the game generates a randomly scaled wine glass and the user has to generate what pitch to break that glass. And as they move their mouse around the screen, the pitch either decreases or increases. And when they get it right, the wine glass breaks. So the aim of the game is to break as many as you can before your breath runs out. That's the basic concept. I wanna learn how to code this. That's one of the worst runs I've ever seen. This felt like a huge undertaking, so I decided to split the game up into its component parts and learn to code each of them, hopefully pulling it all together at the end. And I decided to start with sound, since sound will be integral to the game. I needed to figure out how to pitch a sound up or down based on the mouse position. All right, this is version one of the game. Progress is a little bit slower than I would have hoped. Have I left the house today? No. Am I still in my jammies? Yes. Is the only thing I've eaten an entire packet of peanut M&Ms? Yes. But check this out. So this code plays this MP3 file over and over again. And based on where my mouse is on the screen, it pitches it up or down. It's pretty cool. Progress was slow. I knew what I wanted, I just didn't know how to code it. A lot of the time I would end up with code that actually runs, but didn't produce the intended result. Ah, make it stop! That's not what I wanted. It took me so long, like four versions of the game, just to get an image displayed on the screen. It's loading the images, but just a little bit faster than I would have hoped. <laughs> and then I wanted to have that image shake when the mouse was in the right place and it took me so long to figure that out. Okay, I wanted the object to move around a little bit, but that's perhaps a little bit too much. At this point, I'm using images of fruit as a placeholder because I haven't designed any graphics yet. The resources I mainly used were a JavaScript class and the P5 website. All these little details, painstaking, but I was learning. For a beginner, by far and away, the most frustrating and time-consuming thing was error messages, and I got a lot of them. The request status was 404, not found. What the hell does that mean? Cannot read set volume of defined at setup. What? Uncaught reference error. Screen set volume is not defined. What does that mean? Unexpected token. Cannot read property type. What? I always get this error. I didn't change anything. Unexpected end of input. Unexpected token. Unexpected token else. Error. What error is it now? Error! Error. Again. Error. Error. Error, 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 error. After debugging so many errors, I started to learn how the computer thinks a little bit. Actually, the biggest change to my workflow was when I went right back to basics. When I had an idea that I wanted to implement, 
rather than just jump straight onto the computer and start coding, which would just result in hundreds of errors, I actually got a pen and paper and scribbled out my ideas. This workflow worked so much better and by the time I got to coding, things went way smoother. I was beginning to figure this out. All right, we are at version 15 of the wine glass game now. And the mechanics and how this all works is kind of where I want it to be. For example, you have a health bar and a breath bar and a score, uh, and you can shake the glass at the right pitch and it will break, pushing the space bar to restart the game and health going down, breath going down, keeping score. It all works. Now most of the code is written, it's time to bring this game to life with some graphics and some proper sound design. Doing the sound design for this game, I wanted to create a rich, vibrant, diverse soundscape that allows the user to really be immersed within the game. We've added all these recording techniques in the mixing pot to create what I think is the most profound sonic experience in a game today. Take one. <coughs> Tremendous stuff, Mike. Tremendous stuff. He's really getting in the zone now. This is gonna be magnificent. All right, we need graphics. Now luckily, I've been learning to use Illustrator so I don't have to resort to that absolute drivel. Okay, it is very, very late, but I'm gonna upload this video tomorrow. So let's get these graphics baked into the game and also make a couple extra tweaks just to make the game a little bit more playable. So ridiculous. It's done. I made it. I learned to code it. It's only 200 lines of code, but it is mine. I learned how to do it. It's original. Like and subscribe, punk. By the way, you can play it too, um, for free, of course. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Please go and check it out. Let me know what you think on Twitter or in the comments. <laughs> yes! For this video in particular, Skillshare came in really handy because there was a bunch of different things I needed to learn to pull this project together. JavaScript, obviously, but also Adobe Audition to clean up the audio and Illustrator to design the graphics. And I got pretty good at it too. Check out this logo I also made for the channel. Skillshare classes are made by people who are not just experts in their field, but really excel at teaching. This means I don't have to worry about crappy, unclear audio or really confusing instructions. I can just jump in, learn what I need, and then get back to creating. Skillshare now has more than 25,000 classes like these available on the platform, which means that you can learn whatever you like. Perhaps a skill just to better yourself or maybe a skill that you need to learn for work. I teach a class on Skillshare too. It's about learning and how to optimize your process to reduce frustration, increase your odds of achieving your goals and speed the whole process up. 
I think one of the things people struggle with when learning a new skill is that feeling of just wanting to quit early when they first encounter difficulty. This class has a bunch of strategies that I use to mitigate against that and prepare for that lull in the learning curve. You can check out my classes or any number of the 25,000 available for free using the link in the description, which will get you two months of Skillshare Premium for free. Hurry though, that offer is only available to the first 500 people. So if you want to take on an ambitious project like this that requires a little bit of knowledge from a bunch of different disciplines, then give Skillshare a go. Use the link in the description to get two months for free and there's no commitment to carry on after that offer period ends, so you're free to have a browse around and see if it suits you. And by doing that, you'll also be helping out the show. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.